Hello friends and welcome! If you haven't seen the last episode, feel free to catch up here and if you have, you'll know that Queasy and I are entering the Mustang makeover together. Stick around because I'm going to need your help choosing which horse to bring home. Today is jam-packed. I'll be heading to Blackwater to do some cross-country training with Jericho. Then I've got to come home, get ready, and head to Armadillo to choose our new Mustangs. To make sure I had time to do everything today, I booked the cross-country course for 7.30 in the morning, so I had to get up at 5.30 to get Jericho ready for the drive over there. After he was fed, all I needed to do was make sure he was thoroughly groomed, do his feet, and make sure that I packed enough hay and water for the ride there and back. Then I made sure to pack my cross country vest and Jericho's tack. After the trailer was all loaded, it was around 6.30 and time for us to head off. When we arrived at the training grounds, it was super quiet for two reasons. One was it was dreadfully early, and two, it was predicted to be a scorchingly hot day here in West Elizabeth. Beach's Hope was just around the corner, and I was told to call them if I needed anything, and always make sure I had a phone on me since I was riding alone. There were some pretty fun looking jumps that I was excited to go over with Jericho, and I didn't have to worry about other riders in my way. I got tacked up as quickly as possible to make use of the cooler temperatures in the morning. My plan was to do a thorough warm up and then introduce Jericho to the flags that marked all of the obstacles as I was concerned about him possibly spooking at them. Jericho did so well on the warm up and even when I introduced him to the flags or rode past them, he wasn't phased at all. I was feeling so confident and ready to start jumping, so to start off I wanted to start with the smallest jump which was a flagged log jump. What I hadn't accounted for was a snake hiding in a shrub just down from the jump, and while I didn't spot it, Jericho definitely did. I personally am not a fan of snakes, so if you do like snakes, comment down below a fun snake fact. The critter did eventually leave, and I let Jericho have a look at the shrubs for a moment before getting him to back up a few steps to draw his focus back to me. Then we approached the log at a trot and by golly, he overjumped it and I swear my head nearly touched the moon. 
I have a second angle, which is just the funniest. He goes sailing over this tiny log like it's a Grand Prix jump off. Obviously, I'm feeling pretty good and it's time to start increasing the height. I wanted to take on this wooden fence. For one, it wasn't huge and two, it didn't have any flags. So I knew I didn't run the risk of sudden refusal. I introduced him to the jump, let him look at it from a walk. And once I felt ready, I took the approach at a canter. Everything was going smoothly until he totally sidestepped and almost sent me over his shoulder. Now, I wasn't going to let him be afraid of this jump all day, so I introduced it to him again and took the approach from the other side. I knew I was in trouble when he bolted at the jump and stopped dead right before it. I went absolutely flying over it and landed really hard on the other side. Technically, I did make it over the jump, but my horse didn't come with me. Luckily, I was fine. I just had the wind knocked out of me. Yet another reason you should always wear helmets and chest protection when riding. Jericho was fine too. I am so incredibly lucky he didn't run off or I never would have been able to catch him. I was pretty shaken up after the fall and I did genuinely consider just packing up and going home, but I still had paid to use the ground so I figured I could just mount up and give the log jump another go just to see how we felt. Honestly, I felt much better when I was back in the saddle and took the time to appreciate that we were both okay. It was a beautiful morning and I could take as long as I needed to walk around and just get my confidence back. was happy with the idea of giving the jump another go and it went perfectly. Jericho over jumped again like a numpty but I was happy to just be jumping at all. That single action restored so much of my confidence that I was happy to start properly working to get over some more of the course. We spent the next hour and a half going over obstacles and jumps so I've compiled some of my favourite clips for you to see. I was having an absolute blast. I forgot to mention that the reason we went cross country in the first place was so that Jericho would feel confident enough to do a cross country ride with Wiffy, who is the co-owner of the Wanderlust Ranch server, linked in the description below. That ended up being live streamed and we had so much fun. So feel free to subscribe and pop the bell notification on so you don't miss the next one. It was starting to get later in the morning, so I had to think about wrapping everything up. But before I did, I had one more challenge for myself. There was this massive hedge jump that I had yet to go over. The trick with this jump was that the solid planks weren't that high, but the hedges made it look ginormous. This would be the final jump of the day, and despite my earlier fall, I really wanted to prove Jericho and I could do this. 
I even set up my camera so that you could see how high the jump was. This was certainly going to take some courage from the both of us to complete. I mentally prepared myself and gave Jericho plenty of time to look at the jump. He and I were in great harmony after so many obstacles, so if we were going to do this, it had to be now. My first approach was a disaster. I lined him up, he had great striding, and then I just chickened out. It looked so big when I started to approach and it made me second guess myself. But I wasn't going to give up now. I tried to ease some of my nerves and set up for a second attempt. Once again, I chickened out right before the jump. My new plan was to give Jericho more speed by using the hill, while also doing the two other jumps on the way down to keep my brain busy with no time to overthink. This was going to have to be my last attempt. If I chickened out again, then there was no point forcing it, so I had to make this count. I was over the moon, so bloody proud. The dopamine hit I got from clearing that hedge jump was insane. I could not stop praising Jericho. What a fantastic end to our session. There was going to be lots of treats and cuddles and rest for him. My celebration was cut a little short when I realized my jump fiasco had put me behind schedule and it was time to get a move on and go home. Now, I won't lie, I was super disorganized when it came to packing up and driving home. I ended up forgetting half of my stuff and had to go back for it. This made me a little stressed by the time we were back at the ranch, so I hurried to groom and feed Jericho so that I still had time to have a shower, get dressed, and catch the train to Armadillo. What I had not accounted for was that Nikita had been taken out for a driving lesson, so Gizmo was put into a stall, and Jericho Jericho's paddock was empty. Generally, a rule of thumb is don't leave a horse on their own in a paddock, it's bad for their mental health and can stress them out as they're herd animals. At the time, I didn't know where Gizmo or Nikita were, so I went to ask one of the nearby ranch hands to see if he knew. Meanwhile, there was a loose horse in the round pen near where Jericho was hitched, and it went over to say hi to him, and on the camera I left on a tripod, we can see that at first they were fine, but after a few minutes, Jericho decided he no longer liked this horse, and I heard him throwing a fit, which stressed me out, but the ranch hand was still talking to me, so I wanted to let him finish speaking, when Jericho decided to unhitch himself for some reason. No idea when he taught himself to do that, but this is the worst possible moment to have shown me. Obviously, I go and get him, and at this point, I get the gist that their paddock won't be an appropriate place to leave him, so I went over to the stables, where I then realized where Gizmo was and put Jericho into the stall next to him. Not ideal, as I would have just liked to have turned them both out, but I was super tight on time. Suddenly, I realized I had not unpacked the trailer and started dashing around to put everything back. Once that was done, I ran to our rented cabin, got ready, and ran out the door just in time for the train. Whew, I think it's time for a scenic montage to unwind from that train wreck. The metaphorical one, of course. I used to think I'm the problem That I was way too sensitive React on way too much Until I realized we were different types Carrying a different triggers Scaring us to death Oh, someday we will collide 
Austin, neighbor to Hennigan'stead, where McFarlane's Ranch is located, home to lizards, cacti, heat, and barren landscapes. Generally, New Austin is a harsh place to live, so where civilization passed on moving in, tradition stuck. New Austin has some interesting weather patterns, one in particular called high pressure, where since the region is located in a low basin, cloud cover will rapidly change, so I do apologize for the constant lighting changes on the footage from when we were there. Today, we're in Armadillo, a lively town of country folk who are dedicated to animal husbandry since nothing can really grow here farming-wise. Because the region is so sparsely populated, this is where a lot of wild horses are located. Queezy and I are entering the Mustang makeover pretty late in the season, so a lot of horses have already been picked up. This was going to be one of our last few chances to get in on the makeover, and I am going to need your help choosing which Mustang to bring home. I arrived just on time and found out where the livery stables were since this is where the horses were being held. Please do note that these are wild animals who are stressed out, exhausted, and most likely scared, so we have to be diligent when getting close to them even if it's behind fences. I spotted where Queasy was waiting and I walked over to her and she just laughed at me. Turns out I tried a little too hard with my cowboy outfit, but I still thought it was cute. Then the scouting begun. Before we start, just two things I want you to keep in mind before commenting which horses we should bring home. One, Queasy and I will be getting one Mustang each, so we'll be bringing two horses home. And two, Queasy is a seasoned trainer and Mustang makeover winner, so she has the skills to take on almost any horse. But this is my first time entering, so I'm not nearly as confident as she is. I will most likely need a gentler horse. The first horse we took a look at was number 1003. This was a gelding around the age of 5. He was in pretty good condition, had a little bit of weight on him, and his coat showed no signs of patchiness. While he exhibited stress behaviours like pawing, he had what I can only describe as kind eyes. But do bear in mind that an exhausted horse will behave differently to a horse that has energy, so that is something to remind ourselves. The second horse was number 1714. Another gelding, but this one looks slightly skinnier than the last. He did have a cute face, but absolutely could not stand still. I know the flies were bothering them, but we did nickname him Fidget. That was probably a silly thing to do because now I am a little bit emotionally invested in him. The third horse was quite the character. It was number 2082, and this horse was not afraid to show its discomfort and was almost constantly upset. It was a gelding and his coat was so dirty that his socks were almost impossible to make out. His mane and tail were a mess, making him look even scruffier. This guy had definitely been through a lot both in the wild and in captivity. Maybe he was even the herd leader to some of these horses at one point. The fourth horse was number 1900. She was the first mare and when we were looking at her she seemed perfectly healthy. But after looking at her legs, we realized she had tiny tremors that could be indicative of physical, mental, or psychological damage. This horse was on the calmer side for now, but we were concerned that she had deeper problems than what we could just train out. The fifth horse was a pretty lady at number 2205. Her mane and tail were in terrible condition, much like number 2082, but her general demeanor was more balanced, which was a good sign. The sixth horse we looked at was number 0873. Apparently this gelding had been returned after pickup due to quote, the trainer's health, which is really suspicious. Our concern was that this horse might have had something wrong with them that was very expensive to fix, or that the previous trainer was incompetent and damaged the horse before realizing it was out of their skill range. He stuck to the blue roan that was behind him almost the entire time. The seventh horse we considered was secretly my favorite. 
Number 6971 was a gelding who stood at the far back of the bigger pen. He looked smaller than a lot of the horses, but he was in good condition physically. I commented that he had a sweet face and Queasy did remind me that I would have to sell the horse at the end of the makeover, so maybe I shouldn't pick one I would get too attached to. While we were observing him, we unfortunately found he had similar leg tremors as 1900, which was really sad to see, but I wanted to put him on the list anyway. Originally, we were going to stop there, but one of the livery owners said they had one that had been separated for aggression issues. Obviously, I was already concerned, and when we saw the horse, it was in quite a bad state. Number 8427 was a mare, and she was extremely exhausted, malnourished, and her mane was a mess. She was yet another horse with leg tremors, and when we approached, she made it really clear she wanted us to back off. To no surprise, Queasy was captivated. She loved her coat colour and said she had fire in her eyes, meaning perhaps this was a lead mare. Personally, this horse scared me a little bit. There were other horses there, but we weren't too keen on them for various reasons. So, there are eight horses we might be taking home and the decision is in your hands. Remember to comment which horse you think I should take home and which horse Queasy should take home. In the next video, we'll be picking up your guys' top picks and starting the long process of gentling wild horses. So, I hope you guys enjoyed, stay positive, and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye